Hi there. Thank you for joining me over here on YouTube. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Um, I hope that if you enjoy the video that you'll consider subscribing to my YouTube channel by clicking the button below. And if this video provided you with any information that you found useful, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel when you do that. So today I thought I would come on and just talk a little bit about the travel industry. So there's a lot to talk about when we talk about travel in today's world with the pandemic and with everything that's going on. Um, but I thought I would try to keep this short for now and then come back and answer any other questions that you may have or that I stumble upon. So. Right now, I think that I want to address people asking the question, which I have heard a lot from a lot of my friends and a lot of people that are in my circles. Should I take a cruise right now? What should I do? Should I go on vacation? Should I take a cruise? So I personally can't answer that question for you. I can provide you with information. I can tell you what the protocols are right now for taking a cruise or even going on vacation, but I can't tell you whether you can or should take a cruise. That's a personal decision that each individual person really has to make based on, um, based on you and your family and your, um, if you have any type of medical history or anything like that, those, those questions, um, should be answered within your family. Um, what I can tell you is that, and I'm, and this is just my experience, um, and I'm just, I'm just telling you what my experience is right now. So Jim and I, my husband Jim and I, had a cruise scheduled, you know, like everybody else did for 2020, and all of our vacation plans just got shot out of the water, right? Nobody was vacationing. Hardly anybody was vacationing. Hardly anybody was doing anything. We couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't do anything. So uh, with that cruise being canceled, I had rescheduled for a cruise in, I think it was April of 2022. I figured, okay, <laughs> we'll be far enough out that hopefully the pandemic will be gone by then. It will be able to take this cruise. It's a short, um, four night, five day cruise out of Miami. So it was on Navigator of the Seas Royal Caribbean. So lo and behold, I get an email a couple months ago saying that that cruise was canceled. I'm like, how can you cancel a cruise? You don't even know if the pandemic's going to be around, right? Well, the case was that the ship had been chartered. So they canceled our cruise. So I thought, at that point, what do we want to do? Do we want to move it? So when that happened, my initial thought was, <coughs> we'll just, we'll just go at the same time. We'll just pick another ship. And then I thought when this happened, I'm like, well, September of 2021 should be fine, right? We should be able to cruise by then. Everything will be over and everything will be fine. And there'll be a vaccine and there'll be no problems. So I booked it for, September next month of 2021. And it's actually on Freedom of the Seas. And I actually moved it. It was actually Navigator of the Seas again. So I moved it, same cruise ship, to September. But because they're now moving Navigator to the West Coast, they rebooked us on Freedom of the Seas. So one thing that I think that we all need to pack or have when we're planning a vacation right now is patience um, and the ability to be able to flip and switch on the fly and not be married to any one particular destination place or whatever, cruise ship, whatever it is, because the chances of it being changed are pretty good. So we went from navigator of the seas to freedom of the seas. Well, Freedom of the Seas was actually the first cruise ship that my husband and I, the first trip we took on a cruise ship, the first one we took was Disney four days. But then the first Royal Caribbean seven day was on Freedom of the Seas 11 years ago. So 
I was actually pretty excited about that because that has sentimental value for us. Right? It was the first cruise ship we had been on. Um, we had tried the Disney. Originally, I had thought, well, because my husband can never sit still, we'll do a short cruise. We both like Disney. So I thought, we'll go to Disney. We'll do three days in Disney in the park, and then we'll do four days on the ship. And then I can feel my husband out. Will he like cruising? Will this be something that he'll want to do again? Will he want to do it for seven days? Did he enjoy himself? So um, he did, <laughs> luckily, because I love to cruise. So he did. And so the next cruise that I had planned for us was Freedom of the Seas. So <clears throat> Freedom of the Seas. So we're going next month on Freedom of the Seas. Now, Protocols have changed in the last couple of months, right? So um, going out of Florida, um, they didn't require a vaccine going out of Florida. Um, but if you didn't um, have a vaccine, then you had to um, provide a test prior to going on the cruise. Um, and then you had to test coming off the ship to come home. Um, and, and you had to have a certain amount of travel insurance. So tip number two, so tip number one is pack your patients. Tip number two is always, 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 always purchase travel insurance. It doesn't matter if you're in a pandemic or not, always purchase travel insurance. You never, ever, ever know what's going to happen. It's just like your car insurance, right? You pay for it yearly, monthly, quarterly, however you pay for it. You never know when something is going to happen. You never know if you're going to be in a car accident, but you have the insurance. You have the insurance to protect yourself in case something were to happen. So we always purchase travel insurance, always purchase travel insurance because, you know, we're in our fifties now. And even before when we were, when we were in our forties or whenever, we always purchase travel insurance. You're in a foreign country, you don't know um, how the healthcare systems are there. And if something were to happen and you needed to come home, um, you need to have insurance to be able to take you home. It can cost up to like between 50,000 and 100,000 to repatriate you back here. So you are required to have a certain amount of insurance. Recently, like within the last couple of weeks, um, the Bahamas came out with that they will not allow anybody into their port, any ship in their port, unless the ship is 100% vaccinated. The passengers on the ship and the crew have to be 100% vaccinated. So that changed everything um, for cruises that are going out of Florida as of right now. So third tip is Make sure that if you're not using a travel agent, which you should be using a travel agent if you're traveling anytime, especially now, to make sure that you are reading up on what the protocols are for where you're going. Because now every single country, every single place that you're visiting, even within the United States sometimes, there are different protocols. There are different COVID protocols, whether you're wearing a mask or you're not wearing a mask, whether you can there's a curfew or there's not a curfew. You need to be, you need to know what you're, what you're walking into wherever you're going. So the Bahamas recently changed their protocols. So now every passenger on a cruise ship 12 years and older needs to be vaccinated. Um, and so now we're vaccinated. We have been since April. So now we had to go on to Royal Caribbean's website um, I think it was, I think they actually sent me an email, um, and asked me if we were vaccinated and I had to provide that information that we were vaccinated. And it actually shows now on, I'm not sure if it shows on my cruise planner, but as a travel agent and I'm, uh, and I'm able to access my booking through the travel agent portal, it does show that I am vaccinated. So, um, so we're vaccinated couple of the things for, um, that, that you need to be aware of on the ship. Um, you don't have to wear a mask if you're outside and you're able to socially distance. So, um, by the pool area at the outside bars, um, you know, there's a lot, 
on Freedom of the Seas and on, and on a lot of these cruise ships now, there's a lot of outdoor space. Um, so I'm not real concerned about, you know, not having to wear a mask outside. You don't have to wear a mask in the pool um, and that, that type of thing. Where you do have to wear a mask, though, is inside. So when you're leaving your cabin to go to the pool area, you need to have a mask on within the hallways, in the elevators, and such. In the dining room, you need to have a mask on. When you go to your table, if you're actively eating and drinking, you do not have to wear a mask then. If you're walking around in the promenade area, which is the enclosed center of the ship where they have um, a couple of bars and some stores and some dining and all of that, you need to be that you need to be um, wearing a mask inside whether you're vaccinated or not you need to have a mask on so <laughs> tip number four is make sure you pack some masks right um, and so we are flying down to Miami the ship goes out of Miami so we're flying down on Sunday American Airlines um, <clears throat> one of the things I was able to do I was watching every single day because now tip number five is make sure that you watch your flights because I had booked these flights. These were from canceled, the credits were from canceled flights. So we had a flight out of Boston at 8.15 in the morning, which is reasonable, right? We would have to get up probably around 4.30 in the morning to get to Logan to um, to get on the on the plane by 8.15, 8, I think it was 8.15. I can't remember if it was 8 or 8.15. So it was a pretty decent time. Well, then they changed our flight time to 6.15 in the morning. And in all honesty, I hate those flights because I, can, I, I never sleep the night before if I have to leave on an early morning flight like that, 6.15. So that means I would have to get up at 3 to leave here by 3.30 um, to get to Logan. It's an hour from where we live. So to get there by 4.30, to wait in the lines. Um, I'm seeing that lines, TSA lines are crazy, even if you have TSA pre-check, which we have TSA pre-check. So there's a lot of unknowns and where we used to recommend, you know, I've been traveling, I travel a lot for my travel agency business, but I also traveled a lot for work. And I would always make sure that I get to the airport at least two hours before because you just never know with traffic and if there's a line, if there's a computer glitch because I've had that happen. Um, so I always try to get there at least two hours before, but now they're saying actually you need to be there three hours, three and a half hours ahead of time. So I had, um, we have through American Express, we have a couple of free passes to the American Airlines lounge. So I figured if we get there early and we have to hang out, we can actually use those passes. They're free anyway. Um, so we'll do that. But now our flight, so I changed it. So I'm from 8.15 or 8 o'clock to 6 o'clock in the morning. And then I talked to my husband and I said to him, I really don't want to do that. And he agreed. Although it would be great to be able to spend half the day in Miami just walking around is it really worth having to leave that early? And sometimes it's just not, especially where, um, in all honesty, the cases are high in Florida and I'm not really sure I want to walk around and do a whole heck of a lot. So I changed that flight. It leaves at two o'clock in the afternoon. We get in around 5.15. So by the time we get over to the hotel, which is actually right near the airport, I even booked us a hotel at the airport. Um, you know, we'll have dinner, hang out a bit, and then we'll just um, go to bed and then get up the next morning and um, probably take an Uber over to the pier, the cruise port in Miami. Um, another thing that you want to make sure you want, you should be, you should do. So this is number six um, is <clears throat> as soon as you can do your check-in through Royal Caribbean, which is typically a month out, um, you can go in and select your embarkation time. Our embarkation time initially was 1 o'clock, um, but they changed it. So I was able to go in and actually change our embarkation to 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So we'll, you know, and then you have a half an hour. So between 12 and 12.15, we need to be, be in line and getting ready to get on the ship. Um, no more. So we used to just go whenever we wanted to go or in my in my eyes it was always 
earlier, the better, right? So the earlier I get to the pier, the earlier I can get on the ship, the earlier my vacation starts. I've already paid for it, right? So I want to be there. I want to be on the ship as early as I can. Unfortunately, with, with the pandemic and with COVID in the protocols now at the pier, you can no longer do that. They are strictly abiding by the embarkation time that you have signed up for. So unfortunately, if your embarkation time is three o'clock, you have to wait until three o'clock. They will not let you on earlier and there is no place to sit at the pier. Um, so, and it's hot, so it's Florida. So keep that in mind. Um, so we're all set as of right now. Um, the only thing that we had to do, which I did was I had to schedule our COVID test. So now everybody, couple months ago, anything shorter than any, for a seven day or longer cruise, you had to test, you had to get a COVID test prior to, three days prior to embarkation. Then they changed, so we were all set. We were only going for five days, four nights, five days. So we were all set. We didn't need to get a COVID test prior to, they changed that again. So we now have to get a COVID test. So any cruise, any, well, for Royal Caribbean, and I think actually for all of them now, any cruise that you go on for Royal Caribbean, you have to test three days prior to. You can either do the PCR test or the antigen test, which is the rapid test. And so CVS does them. So the only thing is that you need to make sure that you schedule it because you need the results prior to going to the pier. So I was stalking my CV, local CVS and um, they schedule out, they allow you to schedule out two weeks in advance. So on Saturday, I was able to go and schedule our COVID tests. I wanted to do as early in the morning as possible because my husband has to work, go to work for 10 o'clock. Um, and I noticed that the early mornings were filling up quickly. So I was able to, like, I really wanted a, I forget what the earliest time was, but I was able to get us an appointment at um, a CVS that's further from us. The, the closest one didn't have tests before 10 o'clock. So I was able to get us some tests, a couple of tests um, at a CVS that's further from us. So I got one at 820 and then for my husband and then mine is at 835. So they're, they're like in 15 minute in increments. Um, and then they will, uh, and we're doing the rapid test and then they will email me my results. So I have to take the results with me, um, when we go to travel and I have to take, you have to take along your, um, results for your COVID test, your vaccination cards, your passports, so that's another tip. Number seven, um, make sure that you have a passport. I know that people say that you can cruise with just your birth certificate, which is fine, um, but you really, really should have a valid passport. So if you're planning on taking a cruise, um, make sure that your passport is still, it, it hasn't expired because passports are taking 12 weeks and sometimes longer to renew. So check your passport and make sure that it's still active. Um, and the reason why that you want to make sure that you have a passport instead of a birth certificate, like I had said earlier with the insurance, if something were to happen to you in another country, you need to be able to come home from that country. Because if you need to get off the ship and go to the hospital, you need to be able to come home. So you need to have a passport in order to come home. So if you're in the hospital, clearly there's something wrong. The less stress would be to have a passport, a valid passport. So I'm excited. Um, I, I, you know, it's one of those things where I've tried not to get too excited because I've been afraid that we're going to get canceled or something's going to happen and we're not going to be able to go. So far, so good. It's looking like we're going to be able to go um, and everything looks good for now, right? It could change. So that's why I'm bringing my patience <laughs> and my flexibility because it could change. We have another cruise scheduled in October, so I'll keep you up to date on that one as well. 
So I hope that you found this um, video helpful. If you're looking to possibly take a cruise and you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I am more than happy to answer any questions for you and help you out with that. Um, for this cruise, we've kind of gone all out, right? It's the first vacation, it's the first cruise we've taken since October of 2019. Um, and I've probably spent too much money on things that I really don't need, right? I upgraded us to first class. I didn't need that. But we haven't been on vacation in almost two years. Um, we bought the, the drink package. Um, probably don't need the drink package. Um, and we go back and forth with the drink package every single time we book a cruise. Do we get the drink package? Do we not get the drink package? We go back and forth with that. Um, so I'll talk about that a little bit more in another video. Should you get the drink package? Should you not get the drink package? Um, Royal Caribbean also offers what they call Royal Up. So you can bid on an upgrade. So I have put in a couple of bids to upgrade us to a junior suite or to the grand suite one bedroom grand suite I think I did so we'll see if we get that and I'd have to pay for that but at this point we ha I just want to go on vacation and have a good time and be able to relax and and disconnect from everything that's go going on right now so and I think that probably a lot of people feel that way but again if you have any questions please feel free to reach out I am more than happy to answer any questions and if again if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe below and hit the bell so that you're notified the next time I post a video. So have a great day and I will be back soon with more information and I will see you later. Bye!